8.30 in the morning, second cup of coffee of the day. Let's make a video. Good morning, Internet. This is Olin from What I'm Listening To. Uh, I'm here today to bring you yet another edition of New Editions, the show where I buy stuff from record stores, usually Amoeba, and talk about them on the show and induct them into the collection here. You can't see my hand. It's off camera. There it is. My hand. This collection here. These are albums I actually got the previous day, but because I worked a late shift last night, I didn't get home until about 10 p.m., and there was no way in hell I was going to sit and record a video, partly because I was exhausted, partly because I didn't want to wake up my girlfriend, and partly because, well, I wouldn't have had any light, so the footage would have looked awful. So I'm a day late, and maybe the thunder has died, we'll see, but uh, let's just jump right into it. Let's see what we got today. The first album I want to talk about today, uh, I have Aphex Twins, I Care Because You Do. I've recently just been getting into Apex Twin, and he's one of those guys who has this huge, huge following of people. Everybody who seems to talk about Apex always talks about him with positive reviews, saying he's very, very important in electronica music, which I believe it all because I think a lot of the electronica or IDM music that we have out there is all thanks to his contributions. My first exposure to him was through the Ambient Works Volume 2, and that was during a time when I was just getting into experimental and drone and ambient music. I was kind of disappointed when I checked out the first volume of that series, as well as some of his other albums, because I I really wanted more of the beatless, mellow, kinda spooky sounding music, and everything else he did seemed to be a lot more dancey. But a couple years down the line, I was finally able to get over that, and eventually I bought a copy of Selected Ambient Works Volume 1, and really, really, really enjoyed it. And when it came time to figure out where to go next, I perused through his discography, and found myself enjoying this one the most. This to me is the perfect album that sort of bridged between the ambient stuff and the later hard-hitting IDM stuff that came in the future. The album that came after this is the Richard D. James album, which is far beyond the ambient stuff that I knew of. It's all very, very abrasive and very, very weird music. This, however, has some atmosphere to it. There's some abrasive tracks to it, but overall, it's a nice in-betweener. And just as the creepy cover implies, the music itself is also pretty creepy, which I really, really love. I think right now, this is my current favorite Apex album. Very close second would be Selected Ambient Works 2. I haven't decided which one I like the most, but it's a great album nonetheless and absolutely worth checking out if you have not checked it out already. The next album I have for you today, I have Yola Tango's Popular Songs. I've been a fan of Yola Tango's music for a very long time now. The first album I ever listened to by them was Painful, and for me that kind of set the precedent of what kind of band they were. That album is very dreamy and much more shoegaze oriented than some of the other works they've done. After listening to Painful, I explored the rest of their discography and was a little confused when I didn't hear that dreamy shoegaze sound that I had heard on Painful. But later on I realized that's part of the beauty of Yola Tango. 
They have done so many different styles, and it's exciting to grab an album and think, what are we gonna hear on this one? But the reason I got this album today was thanks to my work. I was working a late shift and decided to throw on Flying Saucer Attack Radio on the Pandora just to see what kind of stuff would come on. And weirdly enough, the song The Fireside came on. Initially, I had no idea it was Yola Tango. All I was hearing was this really mellow, layered guitar track that seemed perfect to be played on the Flying Saucer Attack radio station. But when I saw that it was Yola Tango and it was on this album, I thought, okay, I have to get this one. I gotta see what else may be on this. So this one I'm taking a bit of a gamble on. I only know that one song didn't listen to anything else on it. I'm excited to hear what else might be on this. I'm hoping that some of the other songs will sound like The Fireside. Who knows? It'll be a fun listen regardless. I love Yola Tango. I've got a good amount of their albums already, so I'm just adding it to the collection at this point. <laughs> Next album I have for you today, I have Spaceman 3's The Perfect Prescription. This band is insanely beloved by the stoners, the shoegazers, the psychedelic guys, all those like-minded people. They love this band. I'm kind of late to the party with checking them out. I had listened to, I think, the last album they'd ever put out in their discography. And then I also got a little bit into Spiritualized, which is fronted by one of the members of these guys. But just like that Yola Tango album, I got this one because of listening to the Flying Saucer Attack radio at work. The song Ecstasy Symphony came on, and immediately I was hooked. It was this beautiful drone piece, which once again, layered with all kinds of sounds and I just had to know who it was, what album it was on, and where I could get it. And upon seeing it with Spaceman 3, that to me was that realization of, oh yeah, that band exists. I should go listen to more of them. I know how famous they are and I know that everybody who talks about them says fantastic things about it, so maybe it's time I get another album by them. So I'm starting with this album. This might be the gateway to me checking out the rest of their discography, who knows. But I do know I love that piece that's on here. It's a short song, but I'm hoping that the rest of the tracks on here will be just as experimental, just as layered, and just as beautiful. So this should be a trippy listen. <laughs> of gambles the next album i have for you today i have this night by destroyer <laughs> We can thank Steve the Roommate for getting me to get this album, and I don't think he has any idea that I got this until he's watching this video, so hey Steve, look, I got an album because of you. Big surprise. Oftentimes when he's getting ready for work, he will listen to music on his speaker while taking a shower, and it can be heard. It's pretty loud. But I'm okay with it, because he usually plays really, really good music, and we wouldn't be sitting here talking about this album if he wasn't listening to this guy while getting ready for work. I forget which song he was playing on here, but it sounded exactly like Modest Mouse. I was completely convinced this was a Modest Mouse song that I had not heard. So when I shazammed it and saw that it was this guy, I was completely blown away. Instantaneously, I went to check this album out. I figured if there's music out there that sounds like old Modest Mouse, it's absolutely worth looking into. Turns out the lead guy behind this band was also a member of the New Pornographers for a time. 
which is kind of weird to me because that's a very, very pop forward band. This on the other hand, though melodic, though has some poppy elements to it, much more abrasive. And the fact that the band name is called Destroyer, which sounds more fitting for a metal outfit, little strange, but I was excited to hear something new. And what was more exciting is I found this album in the dollar section, so I barely paid anything for it. I have yet to give it a proper listen. Very excited to check it out, just like that Yola Tango album. I only know the one song, so hopefully the rest of the album will sound just as good. Next album I have for you today, I have Laraji's Ambient 3. This one I'm actually really excited to get. Partly because I'm a huge Brian Eno fan and I love the Ambient series that he's done but also because this is the last album that I didn't have that was a part of the Ambient series. I had part one, part two, part four. Could not find this one for the longest time, up until right now. What's unique about this installation of the Ambient series is, as I said earlier, it's not technically a Brian Eno album. It was produced by Brian Eno, but all the songs on here are composed by the New Age artist Laraji. I'm sometimes hesitant about New Age music. It's very, very close to that of ambient music, and there are some fantastic New Age albums out there, but a lot of times it can come off as incredibly corny, to the point where it's just not that listenable to me. And that's part of the reason why I didn't buy this album sooner. One, I didn't really know who Laraji was, and two, when I saw that it had the New Age label on it, I wasn't really sure if I wanted something like that. Though Eno's music is incredibly beautiful and incredibly mellow, you wouldn't really describe it as New Age. It's just straight up ambient. But after sampling this album a little bit, I thought, okay, this isn't as bad and as corny as I thought it would be. This Laraji guy seems like he's alright. And now that I found a copy of this in the store, I'm really happy I got it and I can finally complete that collection. Now I have to figure out whether I want to file this with the rest of the Brian Eno albums or if I should file this under L. I'll figure that out once I'm done filming this video. Next album I have for you today, I have Steve Hyatt's Down by the Beach by the Road. Did I say that right? Down on the Road by the Beach. I completely flummoxed that, but I'm just gonna, we're gonna stick with that take. <laughs> This is a shining example of how a cover can influence me on buying an album. I like that this album is basically just a simple photograph, very little text. A lot of times the text will be in the dead center saying, this is, this is the person, this is the album title, oh that cover, forget about the cover, look at us, this is what we're called. I like that the title and the artist are in the corner here, just kind of in the background just to show who it is. But I like covers even better when there's no text at all. You just see a picture and all you're left is wondering, what's this going to sound like? Seeing this very spacious photograph of a clear blue sky dude on the beach had to know what this is. And just as the cozy cover implies, the music is also very cozy. As the back says here, this is a guitar album, and it certainly is. It's layers of very mellow guitar work that kind of stray in either synth pop, 
jazz and some blues. Sonically, it reminds me a lot of a Roy Montgomery album. Very guitar forward, but not in the shredding sense, mostly in the atmospheric sense. And it's sad because this album was only ever released in Japan. I feel like it'd be a little more successful if it was released to the rest of the world, but unfortunately, it was only in Japan. Maybe it was cheaper, maybe the artist chose to do it that way, I don't know. All I know is this is a magnificent album, and I think anybody who needs some good, mellow, sunny music should absolutely check this out. Although it might be a little too late because it is technically autumn and the sunny weather is starting to go away. But you could listen to it regardless, or save it till next summer, I don't care. Just check it out at some point, it's a fantastic listen. <laughs> Alrighty, internet, the last album I have for you today, I have Kim Jong Mi's Now. <laughs> As I've talked about in many vlogs in the past, I will oftentimes buy albums simply because they were playing in the record store that I was at. And this album was yet another example of that phenomenon. Kim is a South Korean singer that cut this record, put it out in the 70s, but got very little attention as far as I know. Which is a shame because if you listen to this, it sounds exactly like a 70s psych folk record that you would have heard in America. I would honestly compare this to Bob Dylan, The Birds, um, Rodriguez, any of those contemporaries that were putting out albums like that in the 70s. This should be lumped together with it. I was loving the vibe of this album when it was playing in the store, but I stupidly didn't go and grab it on that particular visit. It took a couple more visits digging through the world section trying to see if they had a copy of it, and it almost got to the point where I thought someone else may have bought it, so I would have probably had to get this online. But on the last visit I was at Amoeba, I found a copy of it and immediately snatched it. This is an absolutely fantastic album. I think anybody should check this out, especially if you are a fan of that 70s folk rock sound. This is wonderful, beautiful music and beautifully packaged too. I think there's a big booklet inside that I have to read up on. But I'm very happy to have found this and can add this to the collection. This is a great release. <laughs> Alrighty then, internet, that does it for me. Hey, if you have any bands or albums you want me to check out, leave a comment down below, and if I like it, maybe I'll include it in a future video. Also, if you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It'll show me the support and I'll love your face for it. And you can also follow me on Instagram for even more music. I post a new album pretty frequently on there, talk a little bit about it, and it gives you a bit of an insight of what else is in my collection. So, thank you very much for watching this video. This is Olin from What I'm Listening To, signing out. Goodbye. <laughs>